Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're taking a look at stage monitors. What they are, how they work, how to use them, and how to get the best results with them. Let's get started. Stage monitors are an essential part of a live sound rig. They're the speakers that allow the musicians on the stage to actually hear themselves, which seems kind of strange because you'd think the musicians could hear themselves, but once all the amplifiers and the drums and everything get going, you need some sound coming back at you so you can hear vocals, instruments that are on the other side of the stage, whatever you need to hear to give a good performance. Setting up and using stage monitors isn't difficult once you understand a few basic concepts, so we'll be going through things like how to wire up your monitors, how to place them on the stage, and how to set up monitor mixes using your mixer. To begin, let's look at the two different types of stage monitors, active and passive. So the two basic types of stage monitors are active and passive, and I've got examples of each here today. This is a JBL 710, and it's an active monitor, which means that all the electronics are built in. There's a power amplifier inside here, a crossover, other electronics as well. This means that this is a very convenient, easy to hook up, one-stop shopping solution for stage monitoring. You just plug in a power cable, connect a signal cable from your mixer, and you're basically ready to go. The more traditional type of stage monitor is a passive monitor, like this PV here. This does not have an amplifier built in, so we need a separate amplifier. So in this case, we'd be coming from our mixer to the amplifier and then to the speaker. A little bit different way of working, works just as well. It's just a few extra cables and an additional external piece of gear. There's one other important difference between active and passive stage monitors. Many times with stage monitors, you'll be daisy chaining them one after another, so connecting them as a series of speakers. With active monitors, this is very simple. You just use a, basically a microphone cable to connect one to the other. You don't have anything to be concerned about. With a passive monitor, on the other hand, every time you hook up an additional speaker, you change the overall impedance of the system. With a passive speaker, we need to be concerned with the impedance. A single PV monitor like this is 8 ohms impedance. Two of them connected together would be 4 ohms. 3, 2 and 2 thirds ohms, and 4 would drop us down to 2 ohms. Now this is important because the amplifier wants to see a certain impedance to perform at its best and to prevent damage. So you need to be aware of that as you're hooking the system up. Let's look at how to wire up a system using active stage monitors. So I've got two monitors here, and I've got my PreSonus Studio Live Mixer over here. We're going to be connecting the mixer into our monitors, and we'll do it in two different ways. Now the first thing you need, of course, with active monitors is a power cable. I've already got those connected. We'll connect those to a regular AC jack. Now, we need to get the sound out of the mixer and into our monitors. So let's go over here. The sound actually feeds out for our monitors from what's called an aux send, and there's an aux output right up here. We'll be taking a closer look at this in just a minute. The output on our mixer is a quarter inch cable, so I'll connect that to my aux one output. We'll bring our cable around, and we want to connect the XLR end of the cable to the input of the monitor. Now at this point, we've got sound coming out of the mixer and into the first monitor. To feed sound to the second stage monitor, we'll come out of the first stage monitor and into the second. For that, we need just a regular XLR cable. So we'll plug into the through output and the other end of the XLR cable goes to the input. So we've done what's called daisy chaining the monitors together. Out of the mixer, into the first monitor, through from the first monitor into the second. Now with this type of a wiring setup, we've got the same signal feeding both monitors. So if you have a single monitor mix, this is the way to hook it up. Now some mixers, like this Studio Live AR16C, actually have two monitor outputs, so we can have separate monitor mixes. We could send one to the lead vocalist and a totally different mix back to our drummer, for example. To hook that up, we'll start with our first monitor exactly the same way. Out of the mixer, into the first monitor. But now we're going to come out of that second aux output on the faceplate of the Studio Live and bring it to our second monitor. So we'll plug in there, run this way. So in this case, we've got direct connection from each monitor directly to the mixer. And this allows us to send a separate feed from the mixer for each of these monitors and create two independent mixes. And we'll take a closer look at how you do that with a mixer in just a little bit. Now let's do the same thing, but we'll hook up passive monitors in this case. The big difference is that we're inserting an additional piece of gear, the power amplifier that we need to actually drive the speakers. But we'll start in the same way. We'll come out of the aux output with a quarter inch connector. And then we'll bring an XLR connector over to channel one. So we've got signal flowing from our mixer into the first channel of the QSC power amplifier. Now we need to connect from the power amplifier down to the actual speaker. To do this, we use a speaker cable. Before we've been using signal cables, but a speaker cable uses much heavier conductors to handle the high power 
that the amplifier is putting out and feeding into the monitor. Now this has what's called a speak-on connection. It's a little different type. You slide it in and rotate and it locks in place. Then we'll come down here and we've got our quarter inch input into the first connection. Now to get the signal from the power amplifier from the first speaker into our second speaker, we just use a jumper cable. Now the good thing about speaker cables is you can run very long speaker lines with no signal loss because it's already after the power amplifier. So you're not going to pick up noise, you're not going to lose signal. So the cables between the monitors and going to the monitors can be much longer if they need to be. I remember earlier we mentioned impedance, and that's an important consideration here. We have two 8 ohm monitors in parallel, which gives us a total of 4 ohms of impedance. And if you look on the back panel of our QSC, it's rated for a minimum of 4 ohms. So we don't want to go any lower with our impedance on these two monitors. We could set this system up with a separate mix for each monitor as well. Simply come out of the second output on the Studio Live mixer into the second channel of the amplifier, and then bring a separate speaker cable from the amplifier to the second speaker, no jumper cable required. In that case, the amplifier is driving each speaker independently, and we can send them a separate mix from the mixer. Now let's talk about placing your monitors on stage. The key is to place the monitors so your performer can hear it, but so you're not causing feedback at the same time. The trick to this is to get the monitor placed into the null point of the microphone. The microphones we use on stage are generally directional microphones, meaning that they pick up sound better from one direction. In this case, we have what's called a cardioid microphone. It actually has a heart-shaped pickup pattern. So the heart kind of comes around this way, and we have a null behind where no sound is picked up. We want to get the monitor into that null spot so that we're not feeding sound out of the monitor, back into the microphone, back into the monitor, back into the microphone, and creating that squealing feedback that we all hate so much. With a cardioid microphone like this, I generally start with the monitor about three feet back, aimed up about at the face of the performer, because remember, your ears are here, they're not somewhere else on your body. So you want to get the sound directed up this way and keep the back of the microphone pointed into that monitor. Sometimes you may encounter what's called a hypercardioid or supercardioid microphone. In that case, they tend to have a spherical shape pickup in the front and a little bit of a lobe in back and two null spots, one here and one here. In that case, you may be better off pulling the monitor a little bit off to the side, so again, it's aimed directly into that null spot. The other thing to be aware of is the other monitors on stage. So if we're set up like this for our lead vocalist and our drummer has a monitor, we don't want the drummer's monitor behind getting into this microphone and causing feedback, so be aware of all your monitors at the same time to prevent those feedback problems. And of course, all this is the same whether you're using active or passive monitors. At this point, we're just concerned about the sound coming out of the speaker, getting into the microphone, but still allowing our performer to clearly hear it. Now let's take a look at how you actually create the monitor mixes on your mixer. We've got a Studio Live AR16C here, which is an analog mixing console. It has two aux sends that we'll be using to feed our monitors, so we have two separate mixes. There's an important distinction we need to look at here. This mixer has both aux sends and an effect send, and the two are actually different. The aux send is the one we want to use because it takes its signal before the fader. So anything we're doing as we move the fader to create our main mix that's going out of the front of house speakers will not affect what's going through the monitors. If we use the effect send, that's post fader. And anytime you move the fader, it also affects what's going out of that effect send. And that's the way you want it for reverbs and things like that. But for monitors, we want to stick with those aux or pre fader sends. So we have two aux sends here. And basically what happens is the signal comes in each channel strip. The aux send picks it up. And depending on where we set the knob here, routes it across to the master aux outputs. And then we have our aux outputs here, which feed into our monitors. So the way I generally start, is I'll turn up my master on my auxes to about zero. And then you can set the amount of each channel that you want in each mix by turning up the knobs on the individual channels to where you want them. Because we have two different aux ends here, one and two, we can create entirely separate mixes so we could feed one to our lead vocalist and one to another performer on stage. So we go along the mixer and determine how much of each channel we want in. Maybe we just want vocals, maybe we want to add some kick drum, maybe we need some keyboards in there, whatever it might be. We can add that using this row of knobs on each channel strip. And then our master is set here, and this sets our overall volume that will feed into our monitors or into our power amp if we have a passive system. One other thing that I'll recommend is I generally start with my monitor volume levels fairly low because I want to prevent any possible feedback. So I'll set this down at a, at a healthy level, but a reasonable level, so I'm not triggering any squealing or feedback. And then as I bring different microphones up, we can start to balance that, create our mix, and then set our overall level here, again, being conscious of feedback. Now, sometimes you'll insert an equalizer between the aux out and the input of your monitors or your power amp to help control that feedback. But that's a little bit more advanced use of things. In most cases, you'll be able to just set your monitors to the proper level here, create your mix, your overall level, and you'll be good to go.
I hope you've enjoyed this look at how to set up, use, and get the most out of stage monitors. If you have questions about stage monitors, mixers, or anything to do with live sound, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.